ACS Blog is here with Vince Warren, Executive Director of the Center for Constitutional Rights. Vince, what would you do in addition to what the Obama administration's already done with their announcement as to state secrets privilege and their use of it last month? Well, you know, you have to remember that, first of all, the state secrets privilege really stems from uh, British principle, and uh, British principle doesn't recognize separation of powers. But here in the United States, of course, uh, we recognize that there need to be checks and balances on the executive. Uh, the state secrets privilege is something that, in my view, really distorts that, where the Bush administration and then the Obama administration has been invoking state secrets privilege not as an evidentiary uh, challenge saying that the information that you are seeking is national security and has security interests and so uh, we don't think we should turn it over in the context of litigation but they've been saying that the entire lawsuit that you're filing, you know, whether it's with respect to Meher Arar, uh, CCR's client, who's the Canadian rendition victim, or Khaled El Masri, who's the ACLU client, uh, who was also rendered to torture, uh, that these cases are, that any information that these cases invoke uh, are so dangerous uh, to, to national security that we need the whole entire case dismissed. Uh, it's a fundamental problem. Um, you know, last month the uh, uh, Obama administration and uh, Eric Holder, the Attorney General, came out with some guidelines, and the guidelines addressed a number of things, and it changed the burden, uh, the type of the level of threat that the government should invoke, and it also said uh, that the government would essentially use its powers for good and not evil. So we would, the government won't, for example, invoke state secrets uh, where the underlying rationale for invoking it would just be to embarrass the government, which is all good things. But what the the uh, the new internal policy guidelines don't do is it doesn't give, uh, it doesn't remedy, I think, the holdover from what the Bush administration um, was, was doing, which was essentially saying that the judicial branch should have no review uh, over the administration policies when those policies involve um, allegations of threats to national security. So essentially the Obama administration is saying that there doesn't seem to be a role for the judiciary to determine whether the executive branch is actually making good, rational, reasonable calculations as to what does and what does not invoke national security. There's one more aspect to it which I think is important is that even if the uh, government said that national security interests are at stake and even if the court believed them and even if the court you know agreed with that defense the remedy should not be that the entire case should be dismissed. The remedy really should be um, that uh, unless there are no other mechanisms by which this information can be kept secret, uh, the case should be dismissed. But we know that there are other mechanisms. In the Guantanamo cases that we work on, some of our lawyers have top secret national security clearance. They can't, my lawyers can't even tell me what's involved in the cases. Um, but that's a way to keep that information secret. It allows the case to go forward. And importantly, it allows the courts to do something that only courts can do, which is to make a judicial determination as to the constitutionality of particular policies.